I guess, where do you think you guys are in terms of doing that compared to where you'd like to be? Well, I mean, I, I think the last two weeks we definitely have been able to run the ball with the running backs better. You know, I think we've opened up some holes a little better. I think the O-line has kind of started to, to gel a little bit in that regard. Uh, you know, I, I'd like to be able to do what, whatever it takes to win football games. But, you know, to find some positives, you know, getting, getting the run game going, hopefully over this last four-game stretch will help with the, with the throw game as well. And, you know, with that, um, Piggy gets some less runs as well. I believe he only had two um, on Saturday against BYU. I know part of that comes down to what's happening in the game and stuff, but is there like a number of runs you'd like to have him have in a game or is, is it just kind of whatever's out there? Yeah, it's kind of a feel. Uh, you know, we don't have a, a set number. You know, with, with a guy like with a guy like Piggy, you know, he's going to create some of his own hits with his scrambles and stuff. So you don't you, you want to try not to run him a ton because he's going to – again, he's going to create some of his own stuff. So, you know, but at the end of the day, we we got to try to do what it takes to win the football game. And uh, if that if that means running the quarterback, then, then that's what we have to do. You know, with FAU, um, second best rushing defense in Conference USA. I know their sample size is a little bit smaller than some teams with the number of games they've been able to play. But, you know, what makes them so good defending their own? Well, their, their D coordinator does a great job of, of – schematically, you know, defending what that team does each week. You know, we, we've seen Marshall, and Marshall's a, a really good football team, and I thought they did a nice job versus them. And uh, so, you know, and it starts out up front. They got good players up front that allow them to, to do some things to let those linebackers run around. But, you know, their D coordinator's done a good job with his scheme for a long time. You know, what else stands out to you about their defense and some of the guys that they have over on that side of the ball? You know, I, I've been in, I guess, this league with those guys, what, this is year five. You know, they, they've always had, even back in 14, 15, uh, you know, when they didn't have as, as good a record as they've had as of late, they, they've always had really good athletes. You know, they, they're down in South Florida, so they're going to have good players. Uh, you know, they've put it together here over the last four or five years and, and you know, combined good players with good coaches and, and you know, which has led to some winning. And, and I think, you know, you look in the back end, they're skilled, they're big, they can run, uh, they cover, you know, they cover you well. The linebackers run, you know, sideline to sideline, they're athletic guys, and, and, and the, the D-line does a good job of keeping the, the O-line off the linebackers to allow those guys to go make plays. You know, with Piggy, um, Coach Helton said he's going to be a starter again this week. What do you want to see him do to continue to try to improve? Um, I guess what do you think it's going to take from him to try to get a win on Saturday? Well, we got to, we got to, you know, I thought the completion percentage versus BYU was good. We completed some passes, but we got to just create a little bit more explosive plays. You know, I think we had what close to 20 completions and, you know, threw for somewhere in that 110 yard range. Was that, you know, you gotta, you're not going to win football games throwing the ball like that. So we got to create some more explosive plays. We got to, when we have those opportunities, we have to hit them. He has to continue to take care of the ball. You know, he threw the one pick there on fourth down, which, you know, to me as a coach, I thought he, he showed progress from, you know, against Chattanooga. We threw it away on fourth down, which is a, a cardinal sin of a quarterback. You know, at least he, he gave us a chance to, to find a completion. He threw it somewhere and, you know, Throwing interceptions on fourth down aren't a big deal. You, you try to, you know, you're just trying to make a play and give yourself a chance. So, you know, I thought he's done a nice job of, of protecting the football the last two weeks. He's just got to, you know, we got to make bigger plays and, and give ourselves, you know, we, in the last two weeks, I think we've had a 19-play a drive and a 20-play drive and, and didn't score a point. So I, I've never, I mean, that's, that's 49 plays of, of successful football that we, we haven't gotten anything out of, and I've never even been a part of that. So, you know, we got to – when we get our opportunities, we got to punch it in the end zone. And, and, you know, in college football, it's hard to execute 20 snaps in a row. So, you'd like to cut those down to six, seven, eight-play drives and, and score touchdowns off of those. And, you know, Dayton Wade, I know he's been out with that lower leg injury. Um, it sounded like he was going to – Coach Helton was going to see where he was at yesterday – or. Monday after we talked to him in practice. Um, did he go, and, and do you have any idea of whether he'll play on Saturday? Uh, I, I don't have any idea. Um, 
he will he was not with us today. So, but we'll we'll see if we can get him back by by Saturday. Um, you know, where do you think the mindset is with the defense right now, and uh, I guess the confidence level heading into this final stretch? You know, the, the good thing about our guys, I mean, confidence has never been really an issue here at WKU, regardless of the outcome, what's going on. And that, that's just the culture of the program, how it's been over to and, and the tradition of the program. Confident bunch of kids, regardless. Uh, right now, defensively, I think the focus is just, let's just execute as many plays we can possibly execute throughout the game. Uh, and, and understand the situational, you know, the situation that we're in, the two minute, the the you know four minute situations, the backed up, the red zone. So we just continue coaching our butts off right now. Uh, our guys want it, so so as a coach, you got to want it just as much. You know, part of watching you guys these last couple of years, it seems like it's been very clean games. Um, Saturday seems pretty uncharacteristic with the number of flags that you guys had. I guess what kind of do you think led to that, and what how important is it going to be to clean that up heading into Friday or Saturday's game now? Uh, we definitely had some flags. Uh, some of the flags that you know we, you know, you know, like you know a, a face mask here or a helmet, uh, you know, the Devin Key with the helmet, the helmet. Um, we had a pass interference that we, you know, that I thought was a tough call. If that's pass interference, every every play is a pass interference. So, you know, some of those things you can you can live with, but it's 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 the decision making flags, the ones, you know, the mental errors, those are the ones that, that you have to get cleaned up. You have to harp on those. And, you know, as a football coach, you, you know, those are the type of things that you see may happen. They may, they may not get the flag for them in game two. As a coach, you, we got to do a great job of, of getting on those guys when we when we know those flags will get called in a critical game. So we just got to keep harping on it and then, you know, you know, punish them or however you want to not reduce the word punish, but, you know, make sure they, they get disciplined for their, for their actions. Yeah, well, that's obviously a really good BYU offense. What was the biggest positive takeaway from that game now heading into this final stretch? Well, uh, you know, I think some things that you can look at as a team, you know, obviously, um, you know, we thought we, we did a good job on the run game against a team like that. Now, they came out firing. They, they, were, they had no interest in trying to run it. You know, they were trying to look good on national TV themselves. I think the quarterback came out and got hot early. They had a nice four, five, six plays right there at the beginning of the first 20. And then I think the positive is that, you know, he was 19 for 32 or whatever. So, I mean, he didn't have his best game against us. You know, uh, whenever they're doing that little Heisman uh, praise, you know, he have a one or two plays for my game, and that's about it. But he won't say how he threw for 450 versus Western Kentucky. So, so that's the pride we're going to take from that. And obviously, you know, we want the team win. We want the win. But – just to answer that question, that's kind of the positive that we took from it. They weren't able to, you know, line up and run it against us. They had a couple runs that popped, but uh, I thought our guys up front did a good job. You know, looking ahead now to Saturday with this FAU team, um, you know, looking at them on film, um, obviously their sample size of games isn't as large as some of the teams that you've played, only I believe yeah. three. You know, uh, what stands out to you about that FAU team? Well, the thing about FAU, I mean, those guys, I think they've been in the Conference USA Championship the past two years, I think. I know they won one in 17. I can't remember the number of them. I mean, those guys, are some, there's some champions on that team. So they're going to play with pride. You know, I mean, they're going to play hard. And Coach Tiger does a good job of knowing Willie for a long time. So so I know those guys want to come out with the right, you know, with the right chip on their shoulders, the right mindset. And I think, you know, they got skilled players and their linemen are big. And I think they running backs do a really good job. You know, Coach Hilton, um, not yesterday, day before yesterday on Monday, um, said they kind of compared to Middle Tennessee with their quarterback and what they do. Do you see that at all? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, a lot of uh, QB, I call it ride and decide type of things where, you know, he, he's going to read some things and decide if he's going to keep it or give it. Uh, a lot of quick throws outside, some quick throws underneath and try to get you with some uh, misdirection, try to throw the ball over the top of your head. And um, I think that's very some very similar things. Uh, co Coach is correct on that. Back to that Middle Tennessee game, what was do you think was the biggest key? I know the defense came out firing in that game with, I believe, five tackles for loss in the first quarter. Um, what's going to be the biggest key and kind of that you can take away from that game against Middle against this FAU team now? Uh, I think the most important thing against Middle, I think we gave up one or two big plays. I think one was a, like an under that, that we missed a tackle that should have been an eight-yard tackle. I think – and then we had a, a run late from the quarterback. We was in a blitz and they ran a QB draw or whatever. But I think those are the only two plays, just keeping the big plays down. I think that's 
the most important thing against the FAU team. I mean, they, uh, they had Charlotte. They were going back and forth, and they popped the run late. It's kind of the same thing versus UTSA. So they just going to do their thing and wait for you to mess up. So we got to be great with our, with our coverages, our run fits, our gaps, and our calls and our checks.